I'm Mark Van Gessel, Extension Weed Specialist with the University of Delaware, and I'm one of the contributors to the Mid-Atlantic Wheat Crop Management Guide for Field Crops. This is an excellent publication based on local data that uh, has been generated from replicated trials at the University of Delaware, University of Maryland, Rutgers University, Virginia Tech, and Penn State. What I'd like to do is walk through an example of how you might use this guide for your own personal use. Mark, I need to treat my corn with a post-emergence herbicide, and I was thinking of using either Halex GT or Caprino. Both of those are very similar products and very similar programs and pretty broad spectrum. But before we look at those, let's get a little bit of background information. Well, Mark, from my scouting report here, my biggest problems are giant foxtail, large crabgrass, pigweeds, common lamb's quarter, common and common ragweed. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any uh, Palmer amaranth in this field? Well, right here I, I put down a few notes and it says no, but I know my neighbor has some in one of his fields. Okay, well we want to be sure that we account for that in the area because it's a pretty problematic weed. Uh, what, what stage is your corn at? It's about a V2, V3 stage. Okay, V3, you're a couple weeks away from canopy closure, so you'll want to include a herbicide that gives you some residual control. What did you use last, um, what did you use at planting or before planting in this field? Well, in this field I used Bicep before planting, but the field did not get rain to activate the herbicide. Okay, so what's the size of your weeds at this point? Well, the common ragweed is at the tallest and it's just under three inches tall right now. Okay, all right. Let's look at table 211. Um, you know, the first part of this chapter deals with the pre-emergence treatment of your corn and we're beyond that at this stage. So, um, looks like Halix GT might have a slight advantage when it comes to the grasses, but otherwise, both these products look very similar for broadleaf weed control. And, you know, if you want to include glyphosate, you can improve your overall grass control with that Caprino. All right, let's look at table 213 uh, for some of the comments on these individual, individual herbicides. The Caprino contains Tembitrione, vine carbazone, and a safener. So we have a group 27 and a group 2 herbicide. Caprino, we see here, is a single use rate of three fluid ounces. And notice here in the comments it says it works better if atrazine is included. The Halix GT contains esmetolachlor, mesotrione, and glyphosate. So here we're getting a group 15, group 27, and group 9 herbicides. And notice the Halix GT has rate range. You, know, you can use it from 3.6 to 4 pints. And it should be tank mixed with atrazine since it includes a 27 herbicide as well uh, because the tank mix will improve the overall performance. So either product should include atrazine and our local data says we should be using about half a pound of atrazine. Now, you know, if you happen to have morning glories in this field, you probably want to use a higher rate of atrazine. So next, let's look at table 2.2 to see what's in these products. Caprino contains laudus and thiancarbonzone, and this thiancarbonzone is an active ingredient that's not sold by it as a single active ingredient. And again, we're getting a group two and a group 27 herbicide here. The Halix GT, it's a, uh, it should be used at 3.6 pints, which is equivalent to pint of dual, three ounces of Callisto, and almost a pound acid equivalent of glyphosate. The rate of Callisto we see here is what we typically use, and as long as we're treating weeds less than three to four inches tall, this rate of glyphosate should be fine for you. All right, now let's, let's look at the uh, post-emergence herbicide application timing. And we see here that Caprino can be applied up to six collar stage of corn and the Halix GT can be applied up to 30 inch tall corn. But remember, both of them, we want to include atrazine, and the atrazine restric restriction is 12 inches, so we have to make sure that we're spraying it before it's 12 inches tall. All right, since both of these are post-emergence herbicides, we gotta think about adjuvants that we may need. So with the Caprino, we should be applying it with crop oil concentrate, and either a nitrogen solution or ammonium sulfate, while the Halix GT should include a non-axurfactant plus 
and ammonium sulfate. So we have two products that are very comparable. We, um, and both of them should use atrazine. And to help with the grass control, the caprino could be tank mixed with glyphosate. So uh, let's look at what was used last year because we want to make sure we're not using the same products year after year and selecting for some of these resistant biotypes. Right. Well, last year it was Liberty Link soybeans and I used Authority Elite I have there. All right. So that Authority Elite was a combination of a group 14 and a group 15 herbicides. So that will help um, uh, with resistance management having that group 14 herbicide. Yes. Did you use Liberty post emergence? I did. Yes, I did. Okay. So that also is a unique herbicide that uh, will help with the resistance management. Um, Let's see, uh, what about next year? What do you intend to do with the field after you harvest your corn? Well, after I harvest my corn next year, the field will be planted to winter wheat and then double crop to soybeans, I have written down here. Okay, so with both of those products, uh, winter wheat can be planted in the fall. I believe it's four or four and a half months uh, to rotation. And for soybeans, it's 10 months to rotation with both of these products. So there's really no difference when it comes to uh, rotation there. So you, you, both of them still are in play as to deciding which one we want. So, um, and, and also with planting wheat and then following with double crop soybeans, you're really helping to diversify your weed management program. You, with the, uh, you're, you're attacking weeds at very different stages of their life cycle with going with this strategy. And with wheat and double crop soybeans being narrow road crops, you're maximizing the effectiveness of some of your cultural programs. So from an overall resistance management standpoint, that, that, that's a great strategy there. So, well, you know, looking at my figures, you're about $3 um, an acre difference between these two programs. But, you know, what you really need to do is talk with your dealer and find out if you're eligible for any rebates or cost savings that, for things that I'm not aware of. Okay. And so once you get those numbers and, and kind of narrow it in, be sure to read the label. And to find out more about how to implement a more comprehensive strategy for integrated weed management, check out the resources here at the integratedweedmanagement.org website. The herbicide information from this video is in the Mid-Atlantic Field Crop Weed Management Guide, which is updated every year. The cost is $25 for a print version. $15 for an enhanced PDF, or for $35 you can buy a bundled set. There's also a free version of a low-resolution PDF available at the University of Delaware Weed Science website.